me. So, uh, let's see if I can get this open here. And uh, uh, this is John D'Angelo, and private consultant with D'Angelo Consulting, I think you say LLC, I think. It's still August 7th, and we're at the Ashto meeting in Biloxi. And John has been kind enough to say a few words about some of the work he is doing with developing means by which uh, rubber can be added to asphalt and then graded using the PG grading system. And with that, I'll leave it up to John to start his story. And well, thank you, George. Appreciate yeah, it. Uh, you bet. No, it's a pleasure to, to be here. And uh, it's, uh, uh, it's John D'Angelo with uh, D'Angelo Consulting LLC. I started that about three years ago after I retired from uh, the Federal Highway Administration. I worked there for 32 years. Uh, and uh, I decided it was time to make room in the government for other people. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, Very good. Maybe they had enough of me. Okay. <laughs> uh, but since then, uh, I've been doing uh, quite a few different uh, activities. And one of those has been looking for the development of a, a sort of a PG, PG rubber specification. Uh, we felt that uh, one of the things that was holding back rubber uh, implementation was the fact that you couldn't uh, grade it under the normal binder system that we had now, and so some of the DOTs were reluctant to make changes, and, and we didn't see any reason why uh, uh, we shouldn't be able to do that. So we've been looking at some new test geometries to make sure we can accommodate the rubber particles and, and get good, accurate results uh, uh, from the test equipment using a, a cup and bob type of uh, geometry in a, in a DSR. And you know the preliminary testing has indicated that yeah we can we can do the testing we can evaluate the the rubber rubber binders uh, just like we do the the standard PG binders both polymer and neat asphalt uh, determine their their properties they uh, grade them in the in the PG system and we really feel that this is you know really open up uh, the market so that people will feel much more comfortable uh, using rubber and. Uh, Look forward to you know getting that spec underway. We've got a preliminary one now for the finer grade uh, grind rubber, so that uh, they can uh, test on the normal geometries, and then we're finalizing some of the testing for the coarser coarser uh, grind rubber, so that uh, we have to have a bigger gap in the equipment, so that we can so we can get good testing on that. But that will be done, I think, very soon also, and so we'll be able to address both the terminal blends and also the field blending uh, with the coarse material. But uh, looking forward to it, I think uh, it's really going to help the industry with, you know, oh, giving them more options uh, to get good quality material uh, and, and still be able to, you know, feel, have a comfort zone that they're testing in, a, in an area where they're familiar with. So. One of the, and you and I have, uh, I know, discussed this and others have, within the PG grading system there is this solubility uh, requirement which is there for some reasons and of course as you add more rubber to the uh, to the asphalt meeting that requirement which is 99 percent is of course difficult as we heard from Louisiana they in essence still test for solubility but they basically just do it for information uh, I think you have also an idea in mind as to how to do this maybe if you could just yeah, do uh, a couple minutes on on what your thoughts on this are. Sure, but what we've done is recommend that you you do run tests just like you normally would, uh, and with the same specification, 99% uh, solubility. Now the rubber mixes are uh, are, are very uh, likely to fail that test. So, so we had, but we put in a second clause that if you fail the 99% solubility, that you would run a second test, uh, which is a centrifuge test. And that allows you to collect the material to evaluate what it is. And so you can test it to see, is it rubber or is it some other product uh, that uh, is the insolubles in, in the asphalt binder. And this allows the highway agencies uh, to sort of keep the solubility spec, but allow rubber because they can always put an exclusion just for rubber in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we know now that they won't be putting some, some of your supply won't be putting things like sawdust or or a filler or mm -hmm. other things in, in the asphalt just to stiffen it up so, so you'll get the products you want uh, that we know, you know are good for performance, things you know, like rubber. The other thing too is, uh, as we heard from Louisiana, they're using a, an elastic 
recovery. I know you've done a lot of work extensively on the MSCR, which has uh, a little bit different concept than elastic recovery. D do you think it's appropriate, or do you think it will be appropriate in the future for some component of the MSCR to, uh, in essence, be more useful than elastic recovery or you know, toughness and tenacity or something like that? Well, that, that's part, you know, a big part of what we're doing is when we're developing the, the specification is specifically looking at the newer, newer tests also, which was the both the stress recovery and recovery, and, uh, and using that specification is, is part of the new rubber uh, spec also. So we give you both either the old PG system or the newer MSCR spec, and uh, you know, we worked on developing both of those. And you know, personally, I, I feel that the percent recovery from the MSCR is much more informative about the, the structure of the, we call the morphology mm -hmm. uh, of the asphalt binder. Uh, and, and so you know, we, we, we can use that in the rubber just as, just as well as we can use it with things like polymer. Uh, there might be slight adjustments to the, the actual values you use, uh, but the test works uh, you know, just, the, you know, just the same on that as it does with uh, polymers and the asphalt. And although we didn't talk about it with Louisiana, I, I know there's some products out there that are actually hybrid. They're, they're combinations of uh, ground tire rubber and polymer, uh, which may have some attraction uh, to people depending on their application. But that could also be tested and also could be PG graded, could it not? Oh, yes. I mean, it meant, you know, just adding things like SPS or SBR to the to the asphalt with the firm rubber, you know, that it, it, those aren't things that are going to make it more difficult. They just make it even actually a little bit easier to test uh, the material because, uh, you know, maybe the percentage of row that might not be quite as high if you put some of these other additives in. Uh, so, yeah, there's no problem at all testing all those different materials. Now, thank you very much, John. And uh, I know you're doing a lot of very good work in this area and look forward to seeing those uh, specifications, the drafts someday in the future, as you say, in the coming months or year, whatever. But I do thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Okay.